All right, everyone, I have the boat sanded down. I have several layers of epoxy on there, sanded it all flush with that nice Festool Rotex, which really saved me a ton of time. Now it's a crucial part of painting. Now I went through a bunch of different design iterations and the idea is that I'm gonna add paint to hide some of this dripping that we had and kinda fix that problem with paint. So I have a design idea that I like. My buddy, Grant came back down. He's gonna help me get started. I'm starting by marking along the bent batten and we'll use those marks to lay down the automotive style detail masking tape. This tape holds a really fine line and because it's narrow, it bends really easy for the curves. It also holds up really well to sanding if you need to sand between coats. The sanding won't destroy it like it will your regular blue or green masking tape that you get from a box store. Then we just add some regular masking tape outside the automotive tape to help against overage with the roller and paintbrush. I'm using Total Boat Wet Edge one part polyurethane topside paint and the first color I'm using is flag red. I strained a small amount of paint into a mixing pot and per the instructions I'm adding a small amount of Total Boat special brushing thinner to the paint. Now most of these high gloss boat paints flash off and become tacky super fast and so a brushing thinner is key and they help with a couple of different things. One, it's going to improve the paint's flow and allow the brushing streaks to lay down and flatten out before they dry and two, it's going to help keep the paint wet long enough to even be able to do the roll and tip method. After I mix the thinner in the paint, I'm gonna prime my brush with thinner as well. This will help keep the paint that gets on the brush from drying and pulling off too much paint from the boat. The purpose of the brush isn't to apply or remove paint, but to smooth the paint out that is laid down by the roller. I apply the paint to a very clean roller tray and then prime the brush with the paint as well. I've seen other videos where people and experts don't prime their brush with paint and then others where they do, but when I tried going without paint on the brush, I didn't get as good of results, so it worked best for me to have a little bit of paint primed on the brush. Then I begin rolling small sections, no more than two roller widths apart at a time before I tip it off. And to tip properly, you wanna start the brush in the unpainted side, pull through the paint and into your last painted section, which is called the wet edge. If you try laying down too much paint at once, it's gonna to start to dry before you can tip it or your last section's wet edge are gonna dry and you're gonna get drag marks on that edge. You also wanna lay down a nice thin coat Thicker coats won't settle and lay down as flat and you'll most likely get sags as the top of the paint is going to skim over and the rest of the paint underneath is going to remain wet and then begin to sag. If you can find an experienced friend, the ideal way to do this is to have one person rolling and one person tipping. And also the type of brush is pretty important. A lot of the pros out there like to use a badger hair brush, but as a novice, I wasn't getting good results with that. I tried several different brushes, and the one that worked best for me was the Purdy brand Syntox brush. It's a super soft brush, and it gave me really nice results. Now, the angle and pressure of the brush is also super important. It was told to me by my buddy Grant, who really knows what he's doing, that the ideal angle of the brush is closer to 90 degrees and that you only want the very light pressure. For me, this Syntox brush, I got best results when I held the brush more at a 45 degree angle, but with those badger hair brushes that the pros use, they are much more dense and they actually have a chisel tip cut to them 
So that is why I think that the pearls hold the brush at closer to a 90 degree angle with those badger brushes. And like I said, there's lots of variables to getting a good paint job and I highly recommend taking some larger scrap pieces of plywood, add epoxy to them and sand them smooth like the side of your boat and practice until you find the right ratios of paint to thinner, the right temperature in your shop, and the right brush and angle, and just practice your technique. It's going to be well worth that extra effort before you start on your boat and have lots of problems like I did that I had to keep going back and fixing. I also wanted to mention that with the Total Boat Wet Edge paint, the can said that I didn't need to prime if I was going over fiberglass, so in case you're wondering, that's why there isn't any primer down first. I only mixed up enough paint and thinner for one side of the boat at a time. And by the time I finished this side, I could already tell that the brushing thinner was evaporating out of the paint and it was starting to not flow quite as well. So it's important to have just enough paint to get one side done. And if you have a large section, you definitely are going to probably need to get another person over there that can help you add thinner back to the paint and keep that nice and fresh so that it'll flow properly over a larger area. I'm going to do two coats of red and between the coats I sand with a hard block and a really fine sandpaper to get any nibs or defects. Then I'll go over everything again with a red scotch Bright scuff pad. Now on to the next coat and I do the same thing as the first coat, rolling and tipping small sections as I go, keeping a wet edge the whole time and applying a nice thin coat. Then before the second coat cures completely, I will pull the masking tape off and even though the first coat is cured, the high quality automotive masking tape is strong enough and crisp enough that it gives me a perfect line when I pull it off. One trick to getting that nice line when pulling your masking tape is to pull back at a nice sharp angle and that kind of helps the tape cut the paint preventing it from wanting to pull up the paint that's on the boat. Next I'll use a compass and a batten up front to give me very subtle marks that I'll use to tape off the next color of paint.
Now on to the next color, which is flag blue. And again, I'm using Total Bolt's wet edge topside paint. I do all the same steps as with the red. I stirred it well, strained it, thinned it, and prepped everything to make sure everything was super clean. And I removed all the dust with a tack cloth and then wiped everything with denatured alcohol after sanding that second coat of red. This time I decided to try painting back to front to see if it went any better. Um, there really wasn't any difference. They both worked well. And I end up doing three total coats of blue. One thing I noticed is that when I cleaned in between coats with acetone, it'll take the gloss off the paint. So I switched to denatured alcohol and it doesn't do that. So keep that in mind when you're cleaning. Um, but I'm not too worried because once I go back and varnish all the wood and all the bright work, I'll go over the paint and polish it back up to a high gloss. But everyone, I want to thank you so much for watching this episode and hopefully you learned a thing or two. Again, I'm not an expert and this is my first boat. And I highly recommend doing as much reading as you can, watch other videos, and practice before you paint. It's not a very forgiving process. Thanks so much again, and we'll see you on the next video.